Deep in Russia's permafrost zone lies the Arctic city, Norilsk. It sits on a latitude of 69 degrees and is roughly 400 kilometers away from Russia's geographical center, Lake Vivi. Moscow, on the other hand, is 2,878 kilometers southwest, which is about a third of the entire width of the country. With a population of 175,000, it is the northernmost city in the world and the second largest in the Arctic Circle, behind Murmansk. The only other major settlement in the permafrost zone is Yakutsk, also known as Russia's coldest city. Norilsk is situated on the foot of the 1,700 meter high Putran mountain, which is currently considered the site of the largest nickel deposits in the world. Consequently, mining and smelting ore are the major industries supporting the population. In fact, the majority of people are employed by Nor Nickel, the company more or less controls the entire city and is one of the biggest nickel producers in the world. So it would be fair to assume that a city like Norilsk, which is a major population hub, is massively productive and is located relatively close to the geographical center of the country, would be well connected through roads and trains. The unfortunate reality of living deep in Russia's Arctic is that access to its northernmost regions can be very difficult. There are no roads or railway lines linking Norilsk to any other cities in the country. The city is essentially an island deep inside of Russian Arctic. Linking such a remotely sparsely populated location with a road will be prohibitively expensive, not to mention the difficulty of building over tundra and the overall dangers posed when driving in the Arctic climate including heavy fog and snowstorms, not to mention the polar nights that can be longer than 40 days. The remoteness of Norilsk makes its inhabitants refer to Moscow as the mainland, as though they themselves are not a part of it. Perhaps this is a slight exaggeration as there is an airport in the city with a regular schedule of commercial flights providing the main option for travelers. The one and only major road leaving Norilsk leads to the town of Dudinka, situated on the shore of the Yenisei River. The Yenisei provides the only other option for leaving and is really the main artery linking Norilsk to the rest of the world, making life here economically feasible, as it provides the main means of exportation. In Norilsk, nickel is loaded onto train tracks and sent to the port in Dundinka, where it is loaded onto ships that transport it up to Kara Sea, heading towards Murmansk, where it is further processed. All in all, if you're a tourist inclined to visit Norilsk, you might think to yourself that this doesn't sound too hard. Just get on a plane and fly there. Like a lot of things in Russia, it's not that easy. You pretty much need the equivalent of a visa to visit Norilsk. It is closed off even for Russians, and even more so to the foreigners. In fact, there are some 44 publicly acknowledged closed off cities still remaining in Russia, just like Norilsk. Many of which either contributed to Soviet Union's nuclear weapons programs, are radioactive, store radioactive materials, or have military bases. Possibly one of the main reasons Norilsk is closed off is because of its poor relationship with nature. As the most polluted city in Russia, Norilsk has a problem. It is said the people here die 10 to 15 years younger than elsewhere in Russia because of the heavy smog and acid rain produced by its industry. With a little under 2 million tons of sulfur dioxide emitted each year, plant life including trees is non-existent in the immediate surroundings. In 2011, a study estimated that an area as large as 4,000 square kilometers was showing signs of vegetation damage surrounding the city. Recently, Norilsk experienced its second oil spill, where on the 29th of May, around 20 tons of diesel escaped the fuel tank, flooding the nearby river and Lake Piasso, dyeing it red. It's a disaster of massive scale. The fuel is likely to reach all the way to Kara Sea and into the Arctic Ocean, damaging and killing wildlife along the way. A similarly bad toxic metal spill also occurred in 2016 when a filtration dam became flooded spilling into the nearby Daldikan River. As the environmental damage over decades of resource exploitation and disasters keeps mounting and life expectancy in the region falling, it seems likely that Norilsk will remain an island, closed off from inquisitive eyes to keep the true environmental impact of this city a secret. From the point of view of someone like Vladimir Putin, it's probably best that everyone forget that this city and others like it even exists. Hey, if you love maps, history, geography, learning about new places, then subscribe and ring the bell button. I don't really have a lot of interest in going to Norilsk. If you were to go to Urban Hell subreddit and you look for the most depressing places to live in the world, Norilsk usually comes up pretty, to pretty top of the list. It's interesting, however, how the people living there seem to have a certain acceptance, like this is the way it is. Pollution, isolation and shorter lifespans, it's just a part of the package of living in Norilsk and people don't seem to be protesting too much. But then again, that's just an outsider perspective 
And maybe if there were protests, maybe there's no way for us to find out that they are happening. So if you're from Norilsk, please leave a comment. Tell us what it's like living there and also tell us what the recent oil spill, how it's actually being treated and how it, what it's like from your perspective, seeing what's happening and what it's like being there right now. This has been Geo Perspective. Have a guess where this is and I will see you in the next video.